guys, it's Honey Do For Me, aka Honey Do For Me. And today I have the Air Max 2017 performance review for you guys. Uh, I know it's been a while, but let's get right into it. Um, I've been running in the shoe for about 60 miles, and yeah, let's start out with the traction. So starting out with the traction, as you guys can see, the outsole is exactly the same pattern they have been using on the 2014, the 2015, and the 2016. They have not switched the outsole up. The only thing that changed on the outsole actually is the rubber compound used, but I'll talk about that more in the durability section. Um, but for traction on the Air Max 2017, it was pretty good. Um, I live in California, so we don't get too crazy, like too crazy weather. Um, but I mean, for the most part, it held the ground really well while I was running, making turns and stuff. Um, while you're running, I feel like you don't need as much traction as like basketball shoes and stuff like that. So the 2000 Air Max 2017 should have you covered in most weather conditions. I can't really speak for the people that live in snow and like all of those like other weather conditions because I mean, I live in California. But yeah, for the most part, traction was really good on the Air Max 2017. Moving on to the cushioning of the Air Max 2017, this is literally what names the shoe, the Air Max 2017. They have a full length Air Max unit as you guys can see. Uh, on this colorway, the airbag is black and it's kind of see-through, which I think is really cool. Um, they have a little Air Max branding right there. Um, so basically they have a little bit of a cushion midsole on top of the Air Max unit and they also have a pretty plush ortholite insole um, on I mean, I can take that for you guys. They have a pretty plush ortholite insole. I mean, it's not real cushioning, but it's kind of like memory foam and it's really nice. Okay, yeah, it's like, it looks like this. Um, I think it's usually, it's thicker than most other Nike running shoes. Um, but yeah, so the Air Maxes are very comfortable in my opinion. Um, I feel like they're, they're not super plush. I'm not sure if you guys like have tried Air Maxes before, but they're not as plush as like Nike Zoom. Um, but they do absorb a lot of impact and uh, I feel like they're a little more, I don't know, I feel like they're like kind of responsive, but then like the whole point of the Air Max is to absorb impact and like have maximum cushioning. But um, in my opinion, I could like in the forefoot, I felt like I could feel a lot of the the columns or I don't know what to call them, but um, the, the pillars, I guess they're called pillars, um, but basically like the heel is super comfortable. I couldn't really feel the pillars, um, but then the forefoot actually, I felt like the pillars and I didn't feel as much air, um, if that makes sense. Like I've had the Air Maxes since like the 2013 model and all of them, like you can feel the pillars. So it's kind of not that comfortable in the forefoot in my opinion. Um, but as for impact protection, I feel like this is a very comfortable shoe. Uh, it absorbs a lot of impact because of the air inside the shoe. And um, the only thing about the Air Maxes is that they're a little bit more heavy because of basically carrying air while you run. Um, but yeah, they're super comfortable in my opinion and I feel like they're a little bit more supportive they're like more supportive comfort, I guess. Um, the cushioning isn't super, super soft. It's kind of like soft and it absorbs impact while still being a little bit supportive, if that makes sense. So yeah, cushioning on the Air Max 2017 was pretty good. Like always, it's been the same for like so many years now. Moving on to the support of the shoe, um, as you guys can see, we have like this, I think they call it a fly mesh upper. Basically, it's just engineer mesh and uh, in the back, they kind of have like a molded foam. Um, and at first, uh, these actually, sorry, these actually fit true to size. I would recommend getting you your true size, even though if you try them on in the store and they're a little bit tight, when you go true to size, trust me, they will break in. And after a while, they have like a pretty comfortable fit. It's not snug at all once you break them in. And um, it's pretty soft after you run in them a couple times. And yeah, I thought the support on the shoe was pretty good. My foot always felt locked in in the shoe. And um, I felt like the upper really didn't bother my foot. There's a couple layers, I feel like, in the toe box. And then uh, in the heel, it's just this molded like foam. Um, my heel always felt contained in the shoe, which was really nice, depending on where you also tie your shoelaces. Um, at first, I didn't tie them all the way to the last eyelet because I felt like the shoelaces weren't long enough, but when I did try to tie them to the last eyelet, your heel was really locked into these Air Maxes. So I thought that the support was pretty good on these. Um, the offset is actually really, really big. I think I feel like it's 13 millimeters. So if you're like a serious runner or um, you really like 
a more of a flat natural like heel drop or whatever then I don't think this is the shoe for you and like if you're a competitive runner I mean I don't think you'd be looking at the shoe anyways um, but yeah the heel the heel to toe offset or whatever uh, didn't really bother me because I'm not a I'm not like a real runner I'm more of just like a hey let me go run so I don't like I'm not slow as shit in basketball but um, so yeah, that's basically my opinion on the support. I thought the heel lockdown was really good, and um, I'm a little bit of an overpronator, so the pillars in uh, the shoe I felt like helped a little bit with my pronation, overpronation. And um, yeah, there's nothing else too much to say about the shoe. The fit was a little bit relaxed after you break them in, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Moving on to the feel of the shoe, I feel like these were a little bit heavy and a little bit bulky, but that's like to be expected with the Air Max line. Um, they're a little bit more bulky and a little bit more durable than the average Nike running shoe. And I feel like nowadays not a lot of people use these for running, so Nike didn't really like try to like make it super light, um, super super slim and sleek like they just like make it like oh this is the air max line okay we're gonna throw mesh upper there's like an air max bottom you know that's it like okay that's the air new air max so like that's what i feel like they're doing with this um it's not really like a serious running shoe it's more of like a casual comfortable shoe that you can wear for like a lot of different things um just a shoe that you can kind of wear all day so i feel like the feel of the shoe while you're running is a little bit more bulky and it's a little heavier but it is pretty comfortable Last but not least, we have durability, and as I said before in the traction, they did change the rubber compound that they used in the outsole from previous years. I actually did not have the 2016 model, so I cannot tell you guys if the outsole is any softer than that, but it is definitely softer than the Air Max 2015 outsole, and I feel like these wear down a lot faster than my Air Max 2015s, because after running these for about 60 miles, um, the nodules or the nubs already started to wear down quite a bit. I don't think you guys will be able to see it, but it is true. And um, I've had the Air Max 2015 for a while, and I feel like they would last a lot longer in terms of outsole for these. Uh, for the durability of the midsole, um, the Air Max unit, I feel like as long as you're not scuffing them up against like your own feet, like rubbing these and stuff, uh, I feel like the Air Max bubble should not pop. Um, but if you step on like a needle or like you step in like, I don't know, nails or something, uh, you're in a construction site, you step in them, then these might actually pop. Um, it, I feel like over time, if you keep like rubbing them against stuff, like the rubber will wear down and eventually the airba airbag will pop. But uh, I still have my Air Max 2013s. If you take good care of them, these will last you a long time in terms of the Air Max bubble and you don't have to worry about them popping. Obviously, if you wear down the outsole so much that it gets to the air unit, it will pop, um, but that should be, like that should take a pretty long time. And as for the upper's durability, I feel like the, the only weak part of the upper is probably the toe box because it is pretty soft, um, but I feel like there's two at least two layers. So even if you do rip the first layer, you're still gonna have the uh, second layer. Um, so yeah, durability on the Air Max 2017s, I feel like they took a step back, but they did make it feel a little bit softer um, in terms of materials and also in terms of the Air Max unit because of the softer outsole. I feel like I felt a little bit of a difference. It felt a little more forgiving and a little more cushioned. Um, but yeah, the durability on the Air Max is pretty good. It's still above average uh, against most shoes, but I feel like they took a step back from the previous models. So overall, the Air Max 2017s, are they worth $190? I do not know. Personally, I don't think I would pay $190, especially if I had the Air Max 2016s, the Air Max 2015s, or the Air Max 2014s, or the Air Max 2013s. If your old Air Maxes are still good, and they are still like in shape kind of, I wouldn't want to spend $190 to get the newest Air Maxes. In my opinion, the um, the whole design and stuff is pretty simple, so like you're not missing out on too much, and I feel like the technology is almost exactly the same. You actually lose Flywire from the Air Max 2016s, the 2015s, and yeah, so like I feel like if you have those, like you should be fine and they're still in good condition. I would wait for these to go on sale if you really want to pick them up because they're almost like the exact shoe and I feel like Nike just keeps like just changing a little like little play little things and changing where the swoosh is and stuff like that on the new Air Maxes and then they keep charging $190. Um, which I understand, like, uh, it's the new Air Max. The Air Maxes are super popular. Um, but yeah, I don't think, personally, it's worth $190. Uh, 
Um, but if you do want to pick up Air Maxes, you can go for the later, uh, the older models, and those should last you a long time. The thing I always liked about the Air Max models are that they are very consistent and they are very comfortable and they last a long time. Even though they are a little bit on the more expensive side, they do last a long time, and I feel like they are well worth the price if you get them around a hundred to one hundred thirty dollars. Um, but yeah, those are my opinions on the Air Max 2017s. Let me know in the comment section down below if you pick up the Air Maxes every year. Uh, if you pick up the Air Maxes because you like them for casual use, for running. Why if you like them for running? Why if you like them for casual use? Just let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always curious to hear what you guys think. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I will have more videos coming in the future. So if you uh, like this video or you like my content, make sure you subscribe and also like the video to let me know. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else to say to you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.